So, Kazim, in our early years, when we were kind of junior pharmacists, I would say, we had lots of um, meetings and discussions down the pub. Me, you, Eric, Jaggy. I'm sure you remember many of them. And we had lots of discussions about how we could be make our, you know, how we could improve pharmacy services, maybe make a few bucks. Um, I have to admit, because a lot of our ideas were very wacky, including yours. <laughs> and a lot of them we felt, I, you know, I felt that they weren't appropriate. But then one day, after many discussions, you came and you discussed this MUR project with me. And actually I felt that that was a very good a good project because actually this this could potentially improve because this was the, this is probably the time when I was a primary care pharmacist so I'd already seen the problems with some of the um G, not the GP prescribing but some of the drugs that the patients were on and that a lot of their you know a lot of them were on polypharmacy and could do with with um with having their their medicines reviewed and also uh, amended if necessary so um I, I kind of So um one of the things myself and my wife do quite a lot we do a lot of um uh, voluntary work so my wife is a guide leader for a local guide unit she's been a guide leader for the last 12 years 10 years um she um used to be the district commissioner for um Southampton Central um and obviously since we moved to Hedge End she's now um moved her unit over to Hedge End and it's it's uh, and has the fourth Hedge End unit and uh, it seems to be going very well i um also get involved in voluntary things i've just become in the last a year I became a governor at my uh, daughter's local school and um and it's been quite a big challenge in the last year we've had to uh, recruit a new head teacher we had the friendly Ofsted came in a couple of weeks ago and uh you know I'm keen to do a lot of work to support that Okay, let's talk talk for a second about um, COPD. So, a lot of times I get asked the question, "How do you? Um, what is the difference between somebody with a chronic obstructive airway disease and asthma?" So, the way I reply to them is basically, if you think about your lungs deteriorating over many years, and I always say that if you uh, or I were to live to the age of two hundred, never smoked. You, would, you too would have um, possibly COPD because what it is is your lungs deteriorating over many years. Now why do we experience it at a younger age or in our lifetime? It's because if you smoke, smoking can cause a dramatic deterioration of your lungs and cause it to deteriorate quicker than, than it can normally. So, um, which is why I always say it's really important if you are a smoker to consider uh, to stop smoking. Now, COPD is usually based on t 30 to 40 pack years. So if you have someone who's smoked 20 a day for uh, 30 years or 40 years, you're much more likely to have COPD than somebody who has smoked less than that or hasn't smoked at all. So even if you smoked heavily for the last, or you know, smoked 20 a day for 10 years, by stopping, you can, can significantly stop the progression of your deterioration of your lungs at that speed by stopping within 10 years so don't feel it's all over if you've only if you've only been smoking for for, for 10 years so stopping is still a good way to um, to improve that if you're worried and you think you may have symptoms of COPD um, you may want to consider going to your, to your GP if you've had a um, a persistent chronic cough that you can't get rid of um, a continuous uh, production of phlegm, so if you're constantly producing up phlegm, or if you're finding it difficult to do certain activities um, due to breathlessness, 
So all these, um, obviously this is not an exhaustive list, but all these kind of things could be a good reason to go and see your, your GP. It may not mean you've got CPD, obviously you can do tests, it might just mean you have a chest infection, or, um, but it's a good thing to rule out. Um, Even if you were diagnosed with COPD, it's not the end of the world. There's lots of um, ways we can help re re reduce uh, the progression of your lung disease. Obviously the main one, as we've already said, is to help you stop smoking. There's many ways we can get help you to stop smoking. There's um, nicotine replacement therapy, there's counselling sessions. Um, people I know have even managed to stop smoking with acupuncture, homeopathy. So there's, there's lots of other ways of doing it. And there's even books out there that you can read that will just stop you just get you to stop smoking so so obviously that that is the only way you can stop or help reduce the increase in deterioration of your lungs but um, but there's also uh, inhaler therapy that we can give now the inhaler th therapy is really for symptom control and to help you make you feel better um, as I said the only way we can treat it is is the stopping the smoking but Again, if you're on therapy, inhaler therapy, and you, if you are diagnosed or you're on inhaler therapy, it's really important, if you haven't, to get yourself your inhaler technique checked and get it checked on a regular basis. Even if you think you've been on it for two, three years, I've come across patients who've been on inhalers for, for 10 years, and when they've demonstrated how to use their inhalers, they've done it very, very poorly.